The Gaza Strip in the Middle East has become a significant open-air concentration camp for the past 16 years, making it one of the most densely populated places on Earth. However, the Gaza War is just one amongst a series of tragic events that had simmered and brewed for decades between the Palestinians and the Israeli settlers. As several other atrocities have occurred that have left behind many historical scars on the collective history of these two communities. In today's video, we shall embark on a journey back in time to the genesis of this long settler colonialism, as well as uncover and expose the evil roots of several atrocities orchestrated by some extreme Zionist groups over the decades that have fueled this hatred and occupation. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The Genesis In 1517, the mighty Ottoman Empire, also known as the Turkish Empire, conquered the land of Palestine, presently known as Israel, and Palestinian territories like the West Bank and Gaza. For decades, they held control over the country, overseeing it with a religious touch, as Palestine was mainly home to a majority of Muslims and a minority of Christians and Jewish natives. Despite their religious differences, the people of Palestine, or Palestinians, were a tight-knit community known as the Arabs. They shared a unique culture, distinct accents, and strong family bonds. But what bound them even more was their collective effort to develop their homeland. However, as Palestine prospered, political and national interests began to surface, each aiming for control of the region. First and foremost were the Arab leaders seeking independence from the Ottoman Empire. But they weren't alone in their aspirations, as another group from Europe, the Zionists, harbored the common goal of establishing a Jewish homeland in Palestine. Adding to the mix were the British, driven by economic, social, and political interests in the land. None of these groups, however, possessed the military might to challenge the Ottoman Empire on their own. Therefore, in 1916, the British and the Arab independence movement pledged to fight the Ottomans together with an understanding that the Arabs would be recognized and supported as an independent Palestinian state, while the British would gain economic and foreign privileges in Arabic lands. As a result of this alliance, the Arabs rebelled against Ottoman rule, and by 1917, the British assumed control, ruling over the Arabs under their mandate in the region, which came to be known as British Palestine. However, in 1917, without consulting the Palestinians, the British declared support for the establishment of a national home for the Jews in Palestine through the issuance of a declaration known as the Balfour Declaration, thereby betraying the Palestinians. This move, contrary to the initial agreement with the Arabs, was strategic for the British to gain more power and political rights over Palestine after World War I in 1918. Starting after World War I, the dismantling of indigenous Palestinian society was set in motion by the large-scale immigration of European Jewish settlers, supported by the newly established British Mandate authorities, who helped them build the autonomous structure of a Zionist parastate. Historians say the first settlers came in the late 1870s and early 1880s, even before the Brits came into power. So in 1920, after the end of World War I, the League of Nations mandate was introduced, transforming the region into mandatory Palestine. As predicted, through the Balfour Declaration, British control solidified. However, unknown to the British, this declaration would mark the beginning of an enduring conflict with a chain of unfortunate events and atrocities committed by some extreme Zionist groups like Haganah, 
Irgun, and Leahy, known as Stern Gang, unfolding in the years that followed. Jaffa Riots In the aftermath of the Balfour Declaration, waves of Jewish illegal immigration flooded into Palestine, gaining control of towns and cities by early 1921, setting the stage for the first unfortunate event known as the Jaffa Riot, which began on the 1st of May 1921. On that fateful day, the Jewish Communist Party aiming to overthrow the British to establish a Soviet Palestine, they decided to mark May Day through a parade from Jaffa to Tel Aviv. However, during the parade, they clashed with a rival socialist group, erupting in chaos. When the police tried to intervene, all hell broke loose and more chaos erupted, leading to several gunshots in the area. Amidst the confusion, the Arabic people of Jaffa believed that the Arabs were under attack by the Jews. In retaliation, a violent mob armed with clubs, knives, swords, and even pistols stormed Jewish buildings, looting and attacking pedestrians, as well as Jewish homes and stores, resulting in a horrific shootout. With reports of murders, beatings, and unspeakable brutality, including attempts at assaulting women from both Arabic and Jewish communities. As the violence continued, a hostel known for housing immigrants became its battleground, as both the mob and residents fought tirelessly, using a range of weapons, including bombs and gunfire. The clash raged on until the 7th of May, 1921, extending beyond Jaffa to places like Abu Kabir and bringing about the deaths of over 47 Jews and 48 Arabs, 146 injured Jews and 73 Arabs, as well as rendering hundreds homeless. Following this riot, in June 1921, High Commissioner Herbert Samuel declared a state of emergency, briefly stopping the immigration of Jews into Palestine and imposing that they would only be allowed to the extent that it did not burden the economy. But while this resolution favored the Arabs, it angered the Jews, who felt he had taken sides with the Arabs. So they boycotted him. Hebron Massacre Closely following the Jaffa Riot in 1921 was the Hebron Massacre. During the summer of 1929, in the ancient city of Hebron, several tensions arose between the Jewish group and the Arabs, fueled by political, religious, and nationalist interests. In Hebron, a significant source of this tension was the status of the Western Wall and the Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem, as Arab propaganda claimed that Jews aimed to take over the Temple Mount, which caused some Muslim leaders, led by Haj Amin al husseini to assert Muslim rights over the Western Wall. To further intensify the dispute, on the 14th of August, 1929, Jewish nationalists marched around the Western Wall, which raised more tensions and brought about rumors that some Jews had attacked Arabs and insulted Prophet Muhammad. Coupled with this rumor, another false rumor that Jews had massacred Arabs in Jerusalem had circulated. On hearing these rumors, on the 23rd of August, 1929, while Jewish worshipers gathered at the Western Wall in Jerusalem to commemorate the 9th of Ave, a day of mourning for the destruction of the Jewish temples, some Arab leaders seized the opportunity to ignite the fire of discontent, spreading false rumors that Jews intended to take control of holy sites, therefore inciting Muslim faithful to fight back. Inflamed by the rumors, Arab mobs in Hebron turned their anger towards the small Jewish community residing there, bringing about chaotic destruction and violence the following morning. At around 8.30 a.m. that Saturday morning, some Arab rioters armed with weapons moved through the narrow streets of Hebron, targeting Jewish homes and businesses. The violence quickly escalated, 
leading to brutal acts, including murders, sexual assaults, and injuries. The British authorities, ill-prepared to handle the scale of the violence, struggled to restore order. Unfortunately, by the time the chaos had subsided, 67 Jews and 9 Arabs had been killed, and many others had been injured. King David Hotel Bombing After the previous attacks on the Jews and the British resolution from the Arab Revolt of 1939, some extremist Zionists became angry, eventually resulting in a terrorist attack against the British on the 22nd of July, 1946, known as the King David Hotel Bombing. Disguising as Arab workers and hotel servers, members of the Irgun, an extremist Zionist militia organization, carefully planted explosives in the hotel's basement, sending warnings to the British to evacuate the premises in an attempt to destroy documents that could incriminate the Jewish agency in assaults against the British. Obtained during Operation Agatha, a series of raids by mandate authorities. Unfortunately, the evacuation was incomplete due to communication issues and the British authorities not heeding the warnings. When the bombs detonated, the southern wing of the King David Hotel crumbled, causing extensive damage and claiming the lives of 91 people, including British, Arab, and Jewish individuals. Al Nakba. The following year, after several attempts to resolve the internal conflict caused by the Balfour Declaration, the British decided to hand over the fate of Palestine to the United Nations. Thus, the United Nations proposed the Partition Plan of 1947 to bring about peace. This plan proposed that Palestine be divided into an independent Arab state and an independent Jewish state. On hearing the plan, the Arabs rejected it, as the plan also proposed offering the most fertile lands to the Jews and would render the majority of Palestinian Arabs living in the divided Jewish area a minority in their own homes. Despite their refusal, in November 1947, the partition was voted on and approved by the United Nations, followed by an announcement by Britain to end their rule of Palestine on the 15th of May 1948. However, a couple of months before the end of British rule, a catastrophe for the Palestinians occurred, also known as the Al-Nakba in Arabic. On the 10th of March 1948, the Haganah, a Zionist militia, adopted Plan de Lent, which, on paper, aimed at gaining control of the Jewish state and the Jewish settlements outside the borders of the Jewish state as proposed by the partition plan. But in reality, this was a plan to destroy and take control of many of the Arab states. The Al-Nakba denoted two special meanings. One was the forced displacement and dispossession of Palestinians from their homes and land, and two, was the violent prevention of the Arabs from returning to their homes in Palestine by shooting at returnees. Zionist forces took more than 78% of historic Palestine, ethnically cleansed 750,000 Palestinians, and destroyed about 530 villages and cities. They killed about 15,000 Palestinians in a series of mass atrocities, including more than 70 massacres. Now, among these massacres, these two became more popular, the Deir Yassin Massacre and the Tantura Massacre. Deir Yassin Massacre. The Deir Yassin Massacre took place on the 9th of April, 1948, by the Irgun and the Lehi Zionist forces, which surrounded the village of Deir Yassin a Palestinian Arab village with hundreds of residents. Despite an earlier peace pact with a neighboring Jewish settlement, Givalt Shal, on the 20th of January that year, the militia attacked the village. This attack resulted in a significant number of Palestinian Arab casualties, including women and children, 
with estimates ranging from several dozen to over a hundred people. After the Dir Yassin massacre, many Palestinians were afraid, leading to a mass exodus of Palestinian Arabs from their homes to other areas, as many feared similar attacks. Having conquered many villages, on the 14th of May, Zionists took over control, declaring the state of Palestine as the state of Israel. Ten Torah Massacre Following the control of Zionists, another massacre followed, known as the Ten Torah Massacre on the 22nd of May, 1948. According to the thesis by Israeli historian Teddy Katz in 1998, on that fateful day, during the military campaign in the area, Israeli forces entered the village of Tentura, killing, sexually assaulting, and committing other forms of violence against the Arabs, which resulted in the massacre of over hundreds of Arabs, despite having surrendered to the mandate of the Zionists. However, this event has been denied by Zionists, causing legal action against him and the University of Haifa for alleged academic misconduct, and his thesis equally faced criticisms. In 2022, an Israeli documentary titled Tantura, which featured survivors of the Tantura massacre, emerged, corroborating Teddy Katz's events of the massacre and his tape recordings. Even though many Israeli officials deny the massacre, all the tape recordings that were revealed and the veteran interviews all point to one direction. The massacre did happen, and Tentura Village was leveled to the ground. So, what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments section below, and remember to hit that subscribe button. To watch more insane and unique stories, click on the video options on the screen. You won't regret it.